hi. Um, thank you all for your time and your interest this evening. Um, so the Little Cree books are a series of leveled books for early Cree readers. Um, and, and I'll get into that in a second, but this whole project all started out when I was uh, a student in Native Studies at the University of Alberta. I was in my second year in 2009, and one of our assignments was to create a book um, and provide images uh, and use kind of the grammar and the vocabulary that we had been learning in class. And since we needed images and I'm not a great artist, uh, I asked a bunch of my artistic friends to get involved with me and provide images. Um, and I provided the text. And I did a couple of the images. The first one that you saw was kind of quilted. Um, and I found that I, I loved the project. The friends who were involved were really excited to learn about Cree language that a lot of them didn't know much about it before. Um, and I, I, f I found that I myself was learning some neat things as I worked on the project. Um, first, you can see here, these are, these are called syllabics. So Cree is written in one of two ways. So you can use this older style um, of kind of like dots and triangles and stuff to write the language. And you can also use what's called standard Roman orthography. So that's the, um, the letters that we're familiar with in, in English. So I was learning how to um, read and write in those and, and type in them as well. Um, and I was also becoming familiar with using Adobe Illustrator and InDesign. So I'm sure many of you know those are kind of industry standard um, design software that have a really steep learning curve. Um, but, it, but it gave me a great project to kind of work through and learn that stuff. At the same time that I was working on this project, um, I was realizing that there was a ton of resources that were available for Cree readers if you have really advanced knowledge of the language. There's, there's a bunch that are either written in syllabics or standard Roman orthography, but not a lot that were um, kind of middle level. Like there's a lot of number one to 10 or whatever colors. Um, and at the same time, uh, I was taking a, a class in education information technology and found what you see here is a smart board, me kind of standing sillily in front of a smart board. Um, and all the schools in Alberta have these and they have access to high-speed internet. So if you can create resources that are free as digital objects or uh, digital files, schools can access them. This map is showing the distribution of the Algonquian language family um, prior to European contact. contact. And this one is showing um, the, the Cree languages specifically, uh, their distribution across Canada. So Cree is a, a language that's within the Algonquian language family. And linguists say that within the next 50 years, Cree is still going to be around, and Inuktitut and Ojibwe are still going to be around. But many of these related languages, um, indigenous languages, are not going to be around. Um, and so I, I think it's really important to create resources, particularly if they um, can be used across different language families that are related to kind of help support um, that language revitalization. I've included this picture just because it's a e neat part of our, um, our history in Alberta. Uh, that was an image from the first book that was ever published in Alberta, and it was published in Cree syllabics in 1883. So um, having kind of all that background in my second year of Cree, um, I, I thought this is something that I'd like to pursue as a project. Uh, I loved learning in that way, and I loved engaging with other friends and, and getting people to contribute their skills. So I proposed to my faculty, um, you know, can I, can I create this pilot project um, where I will use Alberta Education's curricular guidelines because they're laid out very well. Um, uh, Alberta Education has worked with Cree elders and fluent speakers to um, create this, uh, a curricular guideline um, because you can't teach Cree in the same progression as you teach English. For example, um, when we learn English, we, when we're talking about third person singular, um, we'll talk about he or she, like he eats, she sits, or whatever. Um, and in Cree, they do have genders, but when we're talking about third person singular, um, we don't distinguish between genders. So you wouldn't, <laughs> you wouldn't want to be introducing that as, a, as an important part of learning um, to, to, for early readers, basically. Another example is um, when we talk about uh, this, yeah, this, this one's pretty silly. Um, when, when we're talking about um, first person plural, um, Cree, the Cree language distinguishes between whether you're talking about 
we including the listener or we excluding the listener. Um, so, so kind of like I'm saying, you can't just take English texts and translate them directly into Cree. So I thought, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to create a, a series of pilot books, um, and I'll work on them all summer, and I'll have one for each of the grade levels. And I worked so hard in my free time, and I only finished two. <laughs> um, I wrote about five, but I, just the illustrations took so long. I'm not an illustrator, and, and <laughs> using Adobe Illustrator is pretty time consuming. So I ended up launching and making the books available finally in January of 2013. So it started in, in 2009. And uh, yeah, so, so they're up and they're available. There's, there are just two now. Um, but I'm really pushing to get other people involved. So what you see here is an image of uh, a little crocheted tree. Um, I've asked other individuals to come on board as authors and illustrators and people who can support with like web um, development or whatever. So um, for those who are interested in being authors, I'm kind of doing one-on-one -on -one classes and you can access the uh, um, online, Albert, online Cree dictionary um, as an app or as, a, as just a web page um, to kind of start learning the language. And like I say, I'm willing to work with people one-on-one. -on -one. And I, I really believe that this is an important project for, for me and for us right now, because I think that collectively, as Canadians, particularly with what's happened with Idle No More in, in recent months, that um, for the first time in a long time, a lot of Canadians are wondering, what can I do to, to recognize that um, Aboriginal Canadians have something to offer, something that's good, something that is worthwhile, and, and we want to recognize that. And I myself am not Aboriginal. My, um, my heritage is Ukrainian, and I'm thrilled to be Ukrainian. Um, but if you're interested in helping support this language, let me know, and I'd love to have you on board as an author or illustrator or anything else you can contribute. Thank you.